This is Forbidden Speech: The Raw Truth with your host Christina Rivera. In this savvy broadcasting series, we dive into hot topics affecting us all, with cancel culture and big tech censoring any opposing views and thoughts outside of mainstream ideology. It has become more important than ever that we tell the raw truth about everything from U.S. world politics. COVID, Christianity, and everything in between. We invite all points of view to come share their perspective honestly and respectfully. Hi, Dr. John Barnabas. Welcome to Savvy Broadcasting and our new series. We're so grateful to have you here today. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me back. You betcha. Our newest series here is Forbidden Speech: The Raw Truth, and the reason we brought it together and we talked before the interview is really that there's missing information out there. There's certain information that's being、um, under wraps, not being let out, and certain opinions or thoughts that are being kept under wraps. And and we really need people to see all the facts and make up their own mind. And it's very important that people be able to see. All angles on all things, from COVID to politics to current affairs, and so today I read your book, your wonderful book recently, "The Autoimmune Answer." You can get it on Amazon, everyone. Very important if you want to keep your immune system as healthy as possible, your body give it all the resources it needs so it can fight disease.、Um, but also, you had some interesting videos on YouTube about long COVID and Epstein Barr and, and the connections to that and in your immune system, how it all relates. And I'd love for you to share some of your research. It's very important that people be able to see all parts. But、uh, welcome. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it.、Uh, glad to be back, and that is a mouthful.、Um, yeah. yeah, the the the. Well, do you have a question, or do you want me to? No, no. Let,、okay. Let's just jump right in because、yeah, yeah. uh, let's start with your video on the on the long COVID. What the heck is that? Yes. <laughs> so long COVID is essentially someone who has had COVID, whether it's asymptomatic to severe,、mm -hmm. and. Um, essentially, they're through the acute phase of COVID and now have what's called long COVID or post-acute COVID nineteen is another name for it.、Mm -hmm. And essentially, what's happened is they're no longer testing positive to COVID, so they've had a negative test, but they're still having symptoms、mm -hmm. afterward. And so it's called long COVID because the brain fog or the fatigue or the skin、mm -hmm. rashes or the joint pain or the headaches、mm -hmm. or the muscle pain.、Um, Have continued, okay. And so, through time during the pandemic,、um, initially, like everything, it's while、well, there's this named thing in this case, long COVID, and we don't know what causes it, other than、mm -hmm. you know it's associated with COVID, and we don't know what to、mm -hmm. do about it. And so, as as time has moved forward, we've seen more COVID patients, we've seen lo more long COVID patients, and、mm -hmm. we've been able to do more research to elucidate what are mechanisms behind. In this case, long COVID,、mm -hmm. and one of them potentially for people is Epstein Barr virus reactivation.、Mm -hmm. And so, for the listeners who may not be familiar with it being called Epstein Barr virus, Epstein Barr virus is the is the virus that causes mono. So, for those of you out there who have ever had mono in your life, that was Epstein Barr virus. And Epstein Barr virus is a herpes family virus, which、mm -hmm. means it lives in the nervous system forever once you contract it,、mm -hmm. and and it's up to your healthy immune system to keep the red dot on the Epstein Barr virus forehead and keep it in the corner, right?、Mm -hmm. Keep it suppressed.、Mm -hmm. And if your immune system is healthy and does that appropriately, then it does stay suppressed and it doesn't bother you.、But、is it like the shingles thing that comes up for people who had chickenpox? Yeah, very similar. So shingles is a herpes family virus.、Um, herpes simplex one virus causes cold sores. That's、oh, a herpes bastards. family. Bastards all over the place. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> yeah, so there's a bunch of different ones, and it's the same application. Once you have them, they're in the nervous system. Shingles、mm -hmm. is in the dorsal root ganglion of a、uh, spinal nerve.、Mm -hmm. You know, so you get suppressed, and you might have it along your ribs, say, or up over your scalp. Right.、Mm -hmm. It's just a different.、Um, mm. Ganglion that it's in in different people, whereas、mm -hmm. HSV manifests as the cold source when you get stressed、mm -hmm. out. Okay,、yeah. Epstein Barr virus when if you get stressed or immune suppressed, get knocked down for whatever reason. When that reactivates, that might produce fatigue, brain fog, undulating fever, sore、mm -hmm. throat, skin rashes,、mm -hmm. all things that look like long COVID.、Mm -hmm. So these these authors in this recent study. You know, made that connection in their minds, and then set out to study it and see if, in fact, it it was connected.
Yeah. So if that happens and they and they have these symptoms, is there a test they could take to confirm they have Epstein Barr? And then my other question is like, what do they do about it if they do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, yes, there is a test to look for Epstein Barr virus reactivation. And, and before I jump on that real quick, I just want to finish the thought. Uh, your, your your listeners, viewers may say, "Well, I don't have Epstein Barr virus, so this doesn't matter to me." If we tested the planet, 95% of humanity would show history of Epstein-Barr virus exposure. So 95% of 7 billion people would have it on board, okay? The reason you know you don't know that you have it is because you probably contracted it in childhood, which does not result in symptoms or mono. But if we contract it in adolescence, teens, later college, that's when you're more likely to have symptoms in mono and realize that you have it. So to test for it, there's blood tests, simple blood tests that you can have run uh, looking for a couple different antibodies. Mm -hmm. uh, one is called Epstein-Barr virus viral capsid antigen IgM. Sorry for the long nerdy stuff, but um, <laughs> words, that is, that is one target you can test for. Another one is called Epstein-Barr virus early antigen IgG. Mm -hmm. And in the recent study, um, both of those were found in the long COVID patients that were tested mm. to confirm reactivation as part of the long COVID picture in those people. Okay. And so do you want me to share the study or just yeah, please, talk go about for it? it. Okay. Yeah, go for it. That, so, that way they can see he's not talking out of his buns. <laughs> yeah. We'll put it on the screen here. Um, this is not from my buns. This is from the journal pathogens. Okay. And, um, so what they did was they took 185 people with long COVID and they wanted to say, what is the prevalence of long COVID? Mm -hmm. And then is it connected to Epstein-Barr virus? And what they found was 30% of the 185 people mm -hmm. had long COVID. That works out to be 56 people. Mm -hmm. um, excuse me. Uh, yeah, so 30% of long COVID. I misspoke there, sorry. Um, the prevalence of long COVID is 30% in, in their population studied, okay? And then 66% of those 30% or 66% of the patients with long COVID were positive for Epstein-Barr virus indicators in their blood work, okay? So um, they took that as, as being proof that Epstein-Barr reactivation is associated with the long COVID symptoms and the long COVID symptoms may not be COVID related at this point, but be due to Epstein-Barr virus that was reactivated uh -huh. due to the COVID infection, mm -hmm. just adding to the total stress in the person's life. And now mm -hmm. the immune system takes the red dot off the EBV forehead because they're, they're trying to go take care of the more, you know, scary or recent COVID, yeah. if that makes sense. Yeah, totally. So the body's resources was diverted to deal with the COVID that reactivated Epstein-Barr and now they have those symptoms to deal with. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's the mechanism in some people. Um, one way to look at it would be, you know, if your immune system is suppressed enough to have symptomatic COVID, then it makes sense that it would be suppressed enough to not be optimally dealing with Epstein-Barr virus or any other viral or microbial trigger on board potentially. Right. So if you're, mm -hmm. if you're susceptible to infection, you're susceptible to infection right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so that helps us answer your question in terms of like, what do we do about it? Mm -hmm. Right? So okay. I just want to share another study. This is from uh, 2020, um, August 2020. This was in BMJ or British Medical Journal. And this is talking about post acute COVID-19 or long COVID. And essentially, this is, you know, or almost a year ago. Wow. Already. Mm, wow. And so we, we had less information, less statistics. And, and ultimately what they say is, you know, there's not much to do. You don't really have to refer people out unless they're having acute heart or neurologic symptoms. It's just, mm -hmm. they'll have to get over it over four to six weeks. Right. Okay. So, you know, people have been suffering with symptoms without real actionable things to do. Mm -hmm. Well, this, this EBV study came out in June mm -hmm. and now provides us a clinical target, right? Mm -hmm. This isn't the answer for everybody, but for the people that it's found in and makes clinical sense, then it would make sense to address it. And mm -hmm. I said in my video, 
you know, what damage are we doing even if it's not Epstein-Barr virus? Because hmm. the mechanism is the same in that this person is lacking optimal antiviral immune defenses, and we need to support those defenses, whether it's COVID, whether it's Epstein-Barr, whether it's uh, mm -hmm. shingles. You know, we, we need to improve their defenses so we can drive whoever it is mm -hmm. either back into dormancy or eliminate it. Yeah. So how do we get their immune system back up and working so they can fight off these bad viruses or bacteria that might, in, you know, inflict the body after COVID? Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's there's many ways, and I have a YouTube channel, and I have a playlist on my YouTube channel with 35 COVID videos in it now, where we, we cover that a lot, just an interest in time for you. Yeah. But uh, the short answer is there's, again, lots of peer-reviewed scientific research published to show antiviral nutrition for COVID, okay, mm -hmm. and show... Um, nutrients for COVID and how should we be exercising for COVID and these things. So that's all out there, even though it's not, you know, in the mainstream media mm -hmm. in the scientific literature, it's there. And your listeners probably could figure out some of it just mm -hmm. off the top of their head, because I've been teaching throughout this whole pandemic principles over pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So rather than letting fear scare us, it scare us into something we've a choice we probably wouldn't make if we were level-headed. Yeah. When a pandemic comes, okay, well, what are the principles of health that I know? I know that I need to be eating well. I know that I need to be sleeping well. I know that my body needs physical activity. I know I need to modulate stress levels, right? I know community is important to the human species. Mm. So that can help us approach, well, they want us to lock down. Well, that might not be the best choice for community-based mm -hmm. species, right? don't go to the gym. Well, my body needs physical activity, yeah. you know? And so the, the, you know, from a nutrition standpoint, the antiviral nutrition is a essentially a paleo type diet is the best way to describe it easily where people will recognize mm -hmm. it, you know, get rid of the excess sugars and all the comfort foods, all the things you want to eat when you're stressed, <laughs> you know, continue to make the right choices, even when you're mm -hmm. stressed. The fit, go ahead. Yeah, you know, what's interesting about this is that when COVID first hit and I was in New York City, we had lockdown. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the first things I did was work a million hours at my desk, not yeah. get up, uh, not see anyone and go buy cake from the only thing open, which was the bakery. And I was like, I'm just getting coffee, not um, yeah. gain 20 pounds. But the thing is, after that initial couple months of gaining 20 pounds and realizing this isn't working, uh, there are hundreds of free workouts on YouTube. I had no idea existed. Oh, and yeah. now they're they're coming out everywhere. I found one gal, um, Carolyn Gra Griven, I think it's G-I-V-A-N or something. I'll put it in the notes. But bottom line is I've now lost almost 31 pounds. Awesome. So I, I won't even let. And, uh, you know, I, I, like you mentioned, I think a lot of people know what to do, but it's like getting past the whatever, um, you know, like, okay, I want the comfort thing. How much do you want the comfort or how much do you want to be healthy? Um, and this, knowing at a time when people are, are worried about getting sick, there is more empowerment that you could do just to eat better, move a little bit. Make sure you connect with friends if they can't see you in person because they tell you you can't leave your house, at least connecting via phone or, you know, whatever means possible. Yeah, absolutely. And um, it all it all is a lifestyle. The lifestyle based approach is a, are the principles that we want to follow because it's yeah. multifactorial. Like you might be someone who's now dialed in on nutrition, but you spend a ton of time in front of your computer and you watch mainstream news. Right. Mm -hmm. Well, that wow. could be hitting you from a stress cortisol standpoint, mm -hmm. even though you're eating your broccoli. Right. Yeah. Wow. So, so Good point. yeah. So, you know, there are many factors. We have to be diligent and do work. You know, if you're not doing work, you're decaying. Right. Mm -hmm. And in life, that's just a general rule. You're either growing or decaying. And so, you know, we tend to our society, at least is like a very lazy society and promotes laziness, but that leads to decay. And, and then mm. if you look at our society, it's overweight and obese. Well, if you look at real COVID statistics, 75% of severe COVID cases are obese, right? Mm. So it's going to take a little bit of goal setting and persistence mm. yeah. and consistency in making good choices to really not mm. only just protect you from COVID, but give you the life you want to live in, in the, you know, mental emotional state that yeah. will allow you to enjoy that life.
Yeah. You know, you make a really good point, Dr. Barnabas, because anything, even creating great wellness in your life isn't a, a boom. If you've been living a sedentary lifestyle, a stressful life, but lifestyle, saying I'm going to go from here to Z is, is not, <laughs> you're just, you're going to give up and say it's not possible. But taking small steps every day, maybe I'll just cut out the junk food and eat less of it to start, maybe a mm -hmm. cookie a week instead of every single day or something like that. Right, um, yeah. You know, small changes to work up to the bigger change. And you mentioned something very important, which I didn't think of. I was getting a heck of a lot of news when this first started and all hearing all that doomsday stuff is like, ah, so, yeah. it, you know, it's cool to just tune into positive messages, maybe yeah. not sitting in front of Netflix all day long, but positive messages <laughs> that um, inspire you to make change and to not feel that stress coming into your life. Yeah, the power of suggestion is real, and it, it, it can be wielded for good or for bad. And we have, I, mean, I made a video about this a few months ago, too. We have historical precedents of both, right? Mm. So um, the using it for good is during the Great Depression, FDR got all the, all the major media outlets and news people together, and he said, listen, we're not going to put out another shred of journalism saying that we're in a depression and the country's poor or whatever. We're going wow. to say... Um, abundance and growth and progress and basically change the collective consciousness towards an abundance and recovery type mm -hmm. mindset. And that's what the U S did. And then, you know, in 2020, it was the opposite. It was fear, death, fear, death cases, you know, nothing yeah. we can do fear, death, wait for vaccine, fear, death cases. And what did we have, right? We had the opposite effect mm -hmm. and, um, so it can be used either way, and that, that could be used by the media, but you also get to choose on an individual basis every day, what am I going to allow in, garbage in, garbage out, yeah. and what am I going to think, who are the people I'm going to surround myself with, are you going to argue with trolls on Facebook, or are you just going to talk to people who make you happy and are going to encourage you and uplift you, right? Yeah, yeah. That, that is, you've hit on so many wonderful messages today that people can use immediately to get started just on their overall health, mm -hmm. let alone not even COVID. They might not have COVID. They might not have any issues with Epstein-Barr or COVID, but just the very idea they can start working on improving their lifestyle and their health. It's possible. I mean, me, it's been six months and I'm starting to feel a lot better. I yeah. had also some pre-diabetic issues, no more. So, you know, it seemed when you get started, it seems like a long road, but just start today with one of the suggestions Dr. Barnum has uh, offered and you'll be well on your way to a great healthy lifestyle. Yeah, I have a, a patient, I have a saying that, and, I, and I've actually made a t-shirt out of it, it says, uh, consistency is the only magic bullet. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, make that choice today, apple or donut, right? Mm -hmm. Stairs or elevator, front parking spot in front of Whole Foods or back parking spot in front of Whole Foods, right? Mm -hmm. um, you know, engage in a situation that's going to be an argument or not, right? Mm -hmm. So we, we get to make these choices and we have to make these choices. So just ch just changing the, like you said, just yeah. apple or donut, that's easy. Or, mm -hmm. hey, I'm not going to give up my donut. Well, then keep your donut, but eat an apple afterward every time. Yeah. And over time, your, your body's going to start to tell what's what's the nutrition and what's the garbage and you're going to start to not want the garbage anymore. Yeah. And you know what's interesting, Dr. Bartim, is it feels like when you get started, you're like, oh, I can't, it can't be all or nothing. Because then if you try to go cold turkey, you're going to be cheating on the side and feeling bad about it. But what my and my trainer said is, hey, how about we just do one piece of chocolate every evening after mm -hmm. your dinner? And so we started with that the first month. And then without any prodding, I decided, okay, no more chocolate, period. Yeah. Uh, until I could find chocolate that didn't have sugar, which I did a month later. But the point is, there's options and you can make slow habits or slow changes to better health. Yeah, yeah. and the, tur the tortoise wins the race, right? Boom, boom. So let everyone know if they can find out more about you, get a copy of your book, The Autoimmune Answer. How can they do that? Yeah, so The Autoimmune Answer is on Amazon.com. It's available as ebook as paperback as hardcover as audible you know so you can listen to it if you like so um, just head over to amazon and type in the autoimmune answer and whatever you like is there and if you read it and love it i'd i'd love it if you'd leave an amazon review that'd really help me out help me reach other people and then uh, my youtube channel if you just search john bartimus you can find it and uh, maybe he can put the actual link in the show notes so they can just yes. click on that for the YouTube channel. And my practice website is functionalmedicinecharlotte.com. 
Yep, I have it all there. And I just have to thank you again, Dr. Barnabas, for coming to Savvy Broadcasting to share your great wisdom today on Forbidden Speech, the raw truth. We're going to get everyone out there healthy and strong. Thank you so much. Let's do it. I appreciate being here. Good luck, everybody. Like, subscribe, and share this episode. To listen to more savvy episodes and savvy biz tips, go to www.lifeunscriptedradio.com. To find out about our paid sponsorship opportunities or how to become a guest, email Christina at lifeunscriptedradio.com.